I see so many beginner videographers making the same mistakes over and over when it comes to using coloured lighting in their videos. And I'll be honest, I've been guilty of it myself in the past because the thing is, the rules are different when using RGB lights and most of us make the mistakes of thinking we can use the techniques we already know and apply it to coloured lighting when this simply isn't true. And that's why this is really important to understand because otherwise you'll struggle to colour grade and your videos will look cheap. So I'm going to show you the five most common mistakes and how to avoid them so that you can get more professional looking shots with minimal effort. I'll also show you the secrets that the pros are using to get cinematic colours and images. So by the time you finish watching this video you'll be so much more confident when it comes to lighting people and products when you're using colour. Alright just a quick note when you're using multiple light sources all this stuff going on try and stick with the same brand because often from make to make the colours don't actually match up so you might think you've got the same colour but the camera will pick up the slightest of differences and that'll make your colour grading all blotchy plus also the cheaper brands aren't that colour accurate and the lights that I'm using are the Amaran P60C RGB panel light along with the PT2C tube light from Amaran I love using Amaran stuff and Aperture stuff because the colour accuracy is really good and the apps on the phone are the best ones going they're really easy to use so go check these out using the link in the description now the first mistake makes your videos look really cheap and whenever anybody sees a video like this they assume it's been filmed by an amateur because something just looks off. See what a lot of people do is use coloured light as if they were using a key light and blast colour straight onto the product or the person and while this can be okay at times it doesn't always work so there are some better approaches that we can take instead. The easiest way to get around this is to use colour sparingly and just add a little pop of colour to accent certain details and that's why I love these Amaran tube lights because it doesn't belt light everywhere they can be a little bit more direct because of the design so as you can see I'm using this light just off to one side or even sometimes behind the product and it just adds a little bit of a rim light or accent light on the product and it doesn't overdo it. Now I've chosen to match the blue ring on this lens just to make it stand out a little bit more. And I've also added a tiny little bit of key light using the panel light just to bring out some detail on this side and bring the exposure up slightly. And this also gives it a bit more depth. This approach looks so much better than just washing the entire image with one color. This second mistake makes your videos look unnatural and that's because you're either using the wrong colours or you're using colours for the sake of using colours and sometimes you might not need to. Now if I use a green light on this lens it doesn't work for two reasons. One, there's no green on this product or in the scene and two, there are now too many colours. We've got the blue of the lens ring, we've got the red text on the lens, we've got the white text on the lens, we've got black and then we're adding green as well so there's a lot of stuff going on and it's better to stick to just a few colours because adding more can actually take away from what you're trying to achieve. Now within the context of a scene it could work for example if I had like a neon sign in the background something like that then adding the green here would make sense because it gives it more context there's actually a reason for that extra green but for simple product shots like this it just doesn't really work. Now, if you're lighting people try to avoid green or heavy oranges because it can make skin tones look really strange unless it's already part of the environment. Top tip, so it's always better to start with what you already have and work from there. So in my living room I've already got a bluey green wall and a tungsten lamp so I've already got two colours there that I can work with and I can just accentuate those. For example I've matched my tube light to my tungsten lamp just to bring out a little bit more detail on the left hand side and then to mimic or accentuate the light coming in through the window I've just added a daylight temperature light on a softbox from behind just to light the subject a little bit more. So I'm not actually adding any colours, I'm just working with what I've already got. If I were to add a red into this scene there'd be too many colours for a start but also it would make that blue wall look very strange and that just wouldn't work. So coming back to the product and starting with what we already have, we could either use a blue to match the ring of the lens, we could use a white or we could use a contrasting colour to the blue and go for orange which brings me to my next point. Now you could play it safe 
safe and just stick to one colour, but sometimes, depending on what else is in the frame, it could lack depth. Using contrasting colours creates depth and a bit more interest. Now contrasting colours are colours that sit opposite each other on the colour wheel. You could use teal and orange, pink and blue, or if you're feeling particularly spicy, use colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel, like green and yellow. When people first get an RGB light, they have a tendency to crank the saturation up to 100. But you have to be careful with this because you can go a little bit too far. Not everything needs to be at 100%. Sometimes being subtle is a lot better and a lot more natural. Now you can do whatever you want when it comes to colour because it's personal preference, personal taste, but just letting you know that you don't have to go all the way to 100%. The last mistake leads to underexposed shots and the image being too dark and nobody can see what the focus is meant to be. You have to be careful because RGB lights are naturally less powerful than daylight temperature lights. So you need to make sure that there's enough light to expose correctly. Make sure your lights are bright enough, bring your lights a bit closer if you need to, or you could just use a neutral key light like something like I did in this shot and that just brings out a little bit more detail so you can still have your colour but if it's not powerful enough you've got the extra key light. Now even if you do follow the five tips in this video there could still be one major thing holding you back and that's the extra bonus mistake I told you about earlier. There's one huge thing that the pros do when setting their camera up and using coloured lights and that's one of the points that I make in a previous video. So if you really want to level up your production quality I highly recommend watching this video next because it's going to take what you've just learned and make it ten times more powerful.